Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I'll be channeling Brittany Murphy in the afterlife. Brittany Murphy was an actress who died rather young and of course, like some of the Hollywood types, there are some tragic elements to her her life and her transition. Now, I'm going to share with you something kind of interesting. I've been out here on my back deck for about 20 minutes trying to woo, set up to channel. You just witnessed one of the obstacles, sticking points <laughs> to trying to channel. Brittany is the first one that I tried to channel today. And I came outside, the weather seemed fine. I was trying to find a spot where the lighting was okay because sometimes when it's overcast, it can be a little too dark. And so I was trying to find different spots. And as I was doing that, I was moving my camera around. Well, the first time I tried to do a sample recording to see if the wind, all of a sudden that started magically when I came outside, if you could hear it in the microphone. So I did a test with that, but then I realized I had my Bluetooth plugged in. And so I thought, oh, maybe it's not gonna work. Well, it ended up working. So then I'm like, okay, well, this is fine. It doesn't sound bad. So then I moved to another spot, like two different spots. And one was like a spot where there's not an awning, like there's a canopy, a roof over part of the deck, and there's a part where there's not. And I thought, oh, this is better lighting. So I move over there and get things set up. It starts raining, like sprinkling, enough where it's distracting and it's not good for the phone camera. So I'm like, okay, so I guess I'll move again. So I go to move and the microphone cord is stuck underneath or twisted around the the lawn chair that I'm sitting in and I nearly ripped the thing out of the, the little microphone piece. I nearly ripped this out of this, this spot in the bottom, right? Jeez, crisis averted there. So then I move over to the side and I think, well, I'll just stand up and hold the camera because it seems like the taller I am, that the higher up I am, the better the lighting is. So I'm like, oh, I'll just hold it. And maybe I'll try to do that. And I thought, I can't really channel like that, but I could do a regular video. So I start to do that, not videoing it. But then I go, oh, I'm gonna go grab some water. So I set my phone down. And as I go to set the phone down, or the, it's on a little tripod. You can't see it, I'm holding it right now because I'm nervous about it. But it's on a little tripod thing with bendy legs. And just as I go, oh, I'm gonna go inside, the camera flips off, comes off the attachment and falls onto the floor. I'm like, what? With the camera being my phone. <sighs> Didn't break, good thing. I just got a new case and it's not a really like durable one. So, but thank goodness everything is fine. So I go in, get water, come out. I set it on this little, Thing that it's on right now <laughs> set it up and think okay this is gonna work it's gonna look good I set my water next to it and I go to move and I dump the water the water tips over and like centimeters away from my phone I mean there, that could have been really bad so I'm like oh, geez okay so I move my water set everything up and as you just saw, when I started to announce, hey, it's Bridget with the Bub Life channel. La, 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 la. We're gonna channel today. Um, the wind whips up and my phone literally on the stand, it's a little bit wobbly and I know that, but then it literally tips over like toward me. I'm like, oh my gosh, like you just, you saw that. So this is, there's been multiple things. <laughs> and I'm usually not superstitious or worried at all about paranormal stuff or channeling spirit, but there's been too many things in the last 20 minutes that it's got, there's gotta be something going on. I know some of you who are avid watchers here at Above Life Channel are gonna say, well, Bridget, then why are you channeling, you know? And I, because I wanna channel Brittany Murphy, I want to. And, it, and some of you are probably gonna think or perceive, well, who's trying to stop you from channeling her? And I have some ideas. I have some ideas. My understanding is that her husband, boyfriend, husband, he seems, husband like but not I don't know if they were actually together at the time of her death but he also died so and there's some weird stuff there so I'm going to ask for Archangel Michael to come in I'm going to ask for Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael Michael and Raphael are two 
archangels that I work with that help to clear energy and help to clear, to keep the energy clear so that the channel can be clear, so I'm safe, so you're safe, so everybody, you know, you guys usually do ask me, I have had many questions about that, like, are you scared of spirits or, um, you know, what if, what if bad spirits come in when you're channeling good spirits? Like, how do you manage that? Well, you call in help. You be smart about stuff, you know? It's like, when you live this life, you learn tools and strategies to keep energy in a place of light, empowerment, um, positivity. And when it's not, you can feel the difference. And then you invoke your tools you use your tools and it's not just all mystery woo woo stuff it's some basic natural stuff let me just adjust this here that anybody can do or use to help your energy everything's about energy and if you know that then you utilize energy tools it's not that complicated it doesn't have to be in an intense system or process or something woo woo and super magical that you have to do it's just being aware being in tune and following your intuition to do that so michael and Raphael are going to help the energy clear there is a little bit of weather around so the wind is something that i'm going to be aware of and the rain potentially that could come in so but it's kind of perfect because that is indicative of Brittany murphy i feel like now Brittany murphy i remember her she was in the movie clueless so i remember that and i know that she had uh a lot of there's a lot of drama around her personal relationships and her personal relationships I think her mom and her might have been estranged or some weird relationship connection there and then like I said her husband who I think was a manager of hers and um, there's a lot of speculation I think around that and again you know if you watch above life channel that when I do channeling with afterlife guests and celebrities it's not to bust any mysteries or to solve murders let other channels other mediums do that that's not my that's not my jam but I am curious what we can learn from Brittany in the afterlife because after I channeled some Hollywood actresses recently I thought about her and I thought about our versions as we grow up in our genres and generations of actresses and story storylines you know like our Marilyn Monroe's and our our starlets like that and so I think Brittany Murphy has the potential to be that a part of that I feel like she was very talented and I feel like she was very much um, the energy that I get is looking for love and needing a mother figure needing someone to love her and guide her that she could trust and it feels like she was abandoned and, and misused or abused by the people that should have been looking out for her so with that I can feel her energy Whew. there's a lot of pressure in the lungs and in the heart as soon as I say that she looks very shy she looks very young to me she literally looks like a child who's been like abused and um, how do I say that she's withdrawn she looks almost like she has PTSD or something like there's a lot of depression energy I feel bipolar around her I feel like it's hereditary so kind of how a Marilyn Monroe had to deal with mental health stuff from her mother I feel like this is in alignment with the family and yet she looks incredibly smart like in her eyes okay so her eyes are beautiful like they're really dark and they're rich with wisdom and knowledge and she's like looking through me like she looks like an eight-year-old that that is looking at me like a 19 year old like I feel like she's wise to the ways of the world and I feel like she may have been forced to grow up very quickly in circumstances or situations that were not um, ideal and not the norm at all and yet I feel like it's I feel like it's just turn her mom I feel I don't see her dad at all I don't know what her dad's deal was but I just feel like it was her and her mom and then I feel like there's an aunt that was involved or something because her mom is also on again off again or something there's there's a lot of addiction and mental health stuff and I can't tell the difference between if it's alcohol or drugs and painkillers I see that and I see a lot of stuff and I see a lot of um, and I'm confused by this because Brittany's making me feel like she doesn't know who she can trust and I feel like her mom I can't tell if her mom's good or bad influence wise I can't tell because she I don't know I don't think she knows if she can trust her or who to trust 
I also feel like she was very much manipulated by the husband that she had, and I feel like um, he obviously used her money, but at the same time, um, just liked the control factor of her. And it's weird because I feel like he's kind of like a not not known person. Like people don't know him. Like he's an average kind of person that um, just saw her as power and money and like wasn't I don't even know if he was in the entertainment industry or maybe wanted to be and like he's not a great guy he doesn't feel warm and fuzzy he feels like he's out for himself he feels kind of dumb to be honest like not very smart common sense wise like has this persona that he can do what he wants to do and it doesn't matter because she's famous you know and he's with her and yet at the same time I feel like there's a part of him that wants to love her or wants to to be part of like a love story, like a Hollywood love story, but it's not really possible. He doesn't, he's not all there in the mind. Um, again, I don't know about what the deal is with her mom. If she's close, I feel like they're close, but then they're not close and they're close, like they fight a lot and then they're close and then they're not close, they fight a lot. I think mom has some stuff going on. I think there's some mental health things or addiction things and I feel like she need, this is, I'm gonna say a horrible phrase, you guys, cash cow, but I feel like Brittany was her cash cow and other people when it was, I'm not saying that she only wanted her for that and that she was mean to her. I'm just saying that Brittany's success was her mother's um, success, not because her mom wanted to be famous, but because she wanted the money. She needed the money and saw Britney's talent as a way that she could be sustained and taken care of in her life too, you know? And I don't know necessarily know that she's mean intentionally, but I think that she's not, it's not a right relationship at all. And she's saying, Britney's making me feel like, there's some icky stuff here, you guys. Britney's making me feel like there was inappropriate relationships with older men with Britney. And that to get ahead in Hollywood, it's kind of like the Me Too stuff. To get ahead in Hollywood, she had to do some things that she wouldn't necessarily um, have wanted to do. And, um, and her mom, I don't want to say encouraged it, but yeah. Um, and I feel like there's a Southern connection, like Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville, something. And I feel like there's an, there might be an Elvis connection, actually. Maybe her mom was an Elvis fan. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of tragedy in her family. Like, I feel like people have died around her and left her and abandoned her. And so she didn't really have much. Um, and I feel like there's like a trailer park vibe. So I don't know if this guy came from a trailer park or if her mom came. I don't know what the deal is, but there's like this need to leech. The guy is like a leech and his family too. I don't know if it's his mom or what, but they're leeching off Brittany and trying to fulfill like some need for her to have a, a stable family when really shh, they're not stable at all. There's just not, they're not right, you know? She says, I wasn't right. She says, I, I'm not blaming, I'm not going to blame anyone. She says, now finally she's talking good because I look at her and she looks like an eight year old that looks possessed almost, kind of creepy. And you, oh boy, and now it's starting to rain, which rain is a healing agent, a clearing agent, the element of water. I'm gonna keep talking to Brittany. I think there's stuff up with her. I think in the afterlife, there's some unsettled energy vibes. And so I'm gonna ask her, do you need help? What can I do to help you? She says, you're a mom, you're a mom. Don't you love, you love your daughter, you love your children, you would love, you would love me. If I was your daughter, you would love me, you would treat me right. And she's holding like a teddy bear. And it's weird because I feel like a teddy bear is a symbol thing uh, for her. Like she must have had stuffed animals around her or something because I see a teddy bear. She's like, after my death, there was little memorials, you know. She says, I was trying to get back into Hollywood and it was, it was tough. She says, I was, I was really sick. I was really sick. My body just couldn't handle it. And she says, yes, it's true that I had some addiction problems or I struggled with some things. Um, but, you know, everyone does. Everyone does. A lot, uh, a lot of people in Hollywood do. And 
you do what you need to so that you can be you know successful and do the work you need to do and I had dreams for my life that I wanted to be a mom and she says that she she's showing me like having a baby or being pregnant maybe having a miscarriage or something I wanted to be a mom she said I wanted to be a mom and I was promised you know dreams of you know like the white picket fence and you know all that it sounds so silly doesn't it and I thought that You know, may maybe if someone else could give that to me, that I couldn't give that to myself, that someone else could give that to me. But I had to work really hard. I, I knew that. I I'm not afraid. I, I was not afraid of hard work. And I know that I could offer a lot, you know. And I was tired of only getting work or jobs that were... Um, you know, small roles or bits, bit parts. And I know that I'm better than that. I know that I am. I know that I am. I know that I can do so much more. And I had the opportunity. She's showing me like country music or singing like that. She may have had the opportunity to sing or be in a show where she would have been a singer, like a Nash in Nashville or something. That's coming up again, you guys. I'm not sure what that so Southern tie is. And I see like a trailer park and all that. I don't know what that's about. She says... Being a serious actress, you know, there are, there are so many others, she says, like a Reese Witherspoon that was able to make different kinds of movies and, I mean, she was successful and, you know, and she did Legally Blonde and so why can't I be successful after doing Clueless and I feel like MTV is a piece of this or there's a, I don't know if it's a reality show or if there's some kind of MTV like show or something that was backed by MTV, but that's some, there's something about that that's showing up here. And I'm not sure what that means or if there was like a series or something that you were on that was related to that they produced. Maybe I'm not sure. She says the money goes fast. It just goes away so fast. And I wasn't really out for money for myself. I just, I, there's parallels, parallels, you guys here between her and like the actress, the young actress now, Amanda Bynes. I can feel that. Um, not a Lindsay Lohan type energy though, or like a story like a Lindsay Lohan. Like, I feel like there may have been some addiction. She may have had treatment and she may have come back. But I think it's because of the environment and the people around her. And it looks like there needs to be some kind of medication for mental health stuff, but that that is being confused with other things and causing problems for her. So, and she says, I turned down things I shouldn't have turned down because of the people around me, because it wasn't enough. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't big enough for me. It wasn't gonna be long-term enough. It wasn't a good stepping stone. And she's making me feel like she worked and then she stopped and then she got back into things and the getting back into things was was difficult and she's showing me um and then uh, there's some kind of again there's like a singing star kind of vibe like a pop star vibe but a country western or something i don't know what that's about if you guys are a britney murphy fan fill that in the blanks there and if she was pregnant or had an abortion or a miscarriage and you know that, will you put that below? Because I can feel that. There's a part of her that aches for wanting to be a mom. But that might be because she didn't have a good relationship with her mom. So there's some, I am going to ask you, there's a lot of speculation around your death. And I don't know a whole lot about it. I know, I remember that there was stuff about it. There was questions about it like, was it an accident? Was it an overdose? Was she sick? What was going on? What was really happening? Because there were two other people in the house and it looks like a townhouse kind of thing. Or if it's a bungalow thing, it's above. I feel like you were in California, probably LA or Hollywood. It looks like California. And I can tell by the, um, the landscape um that i see around and then i also see the the like terracotta the, the side of the 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 townhouse thing or whatever it is the condo thing or whatever it is i see you going up the stairs to get there 
and oh, I feel like you're depressed, like you're really sad, you're so depressed, you're so, so, so sad. Why are you so sad? What's making you so sad? I just want to be loved. And she says, I just want to be loved. I just want to be loved. I want to be appreciated and I want to be loved. I just want to be loved. And there's like a feeling of I need to be good enough. I don't feel good enough. That kind of thing. That makes me feel very sad. Yes, depression. She says depression um, is a factor. And but she's showing me medicine. Like she's taking all these pills, these different kinds of medicines. I don't see like an overdose scenario. I'm not. I'm really confused about the circumstances surrounding your death because it doesn't look clean. Like I can see like a glass of water on the nightstand and some pills and something that looks like powdery stuff that it might be like a, that you would dump into your glass. Like when you have a cold, a really bad cold, you dump this like powdery tablets, like those Alka-Seltzer things or something, or Tamiflu, whatever, and you put it in and you drink it and it's supposed to help, you know, kind of thing. It's like flu-like symptoms. Like I have a multiple things and I see a beautiful butterfly image. And then she's saying, I wanted to die. Oh, that's sad. Brittany Murphy says, I wanted to die. Did you take your own life? I didn't commit suicide. She said, I didn't commit suicide. I had plenty of opportunity earlier on in my life. She says, maybe I should have done it then. She's making me feel like she misses her dad. Like she really misses her dad. Not having that kind of a role model in her life is really difficult for her, she's saying. And there's something, some kind of big deal about a car, like a fancy car, a special car, a sports car, some big deal about like a, having a really ni having a nice car is a big deal. And I don't know what that's about. I don't know if like when she died, her husband went out and bought a new car or something. I don't know what the deal is with that. Can you talk about him? You were married at the time of your death. I'm confused because I feel like you were together and then you weren't together and then you're together again. Like you're living with your husband, you're living with your mom, you're living with your husband. But when you died, I don't feel like, I don't know if your mom was there. There was a woman, but I don't know if it's your mom. I'm so confused by your mom's role because I, she feels as needy to you. Like to me, your mom feels like needy, like she needs you like to feel good about herself but not like she doesn't want to mother you like a mother loves a daughter. She just needs you so that she feels like she has um, an important part of life. Like she, like that her, Brittany, she feels like your mom feels like, to me energetically, when the connection, the relationship you have, it feels like she needs you so that she feels like she has something worth of value and you're valuable to her. And I'm not saying that she didn't love you or anything. I'm just saying it's messed up. It's not normal. And I feel like there's a huge age difference between you and the man that you're with, the husband. And I don't feel like he started off as a manager, but I feel like he tried to manage or take over your career. And because of him, you made choices that weren't great. And I feel like he helped you self-medicate a little bit, numb yourself a little bit. So when you're depressed, he helped you give you medications or encouraged you to get prescription medications to help you feel better, right? Like, you know, depression, you would get some medications that would help you feel a little more um, awake and part of life. Um, but I also feel like when you got, you got really fiery and powerful and passionate at times. So a little bit manic, not horribly manic, but a little bit. And that, that part of you, he didn't necessarily know how to, didn't really know how to handle that because he couldn't control that part of you. So it was better for him when you were more depressed or in more of a, a uh, low kind of energy. And I feel like there's something about your life insurance policy or your will or something that has to do with him. Like he, he shouldn't, he, and I think that that's why people maybe think that he had something to do with your death. Like that he actually tried to kill you or have you killed or whatever it was, you know, whether it be poison you or what. But I don't think that that's true. I think he, saw that I'm feeling like he knew you were sick and that if you got so low that you committed suicide or you killed yourself or you overdosed you overdosed okay 
So not on purposely killed yourself. How about that? If you got to the point where you just overdosed, then he would get your money. But I don't necessarily think that he made made sure that the circumstances were right so he you could you would die so he would get your money. I don't think that that's I think that it crossed his mind, his thought process was, well, eventually, if she ends up killing herself, then I, you know, then I'm going to be set. I'll have her money either way. I'll have the money either way. But I think that you are worth more, more to him alive and being successful and, you know, if you could get another big role. And it looks like you were either studying for a new role, and it looks like in a movie, um, or you were auditioning or something because it looks like that you're on the you're on the cusp of something big but then you're like sick or you have one of these moments where you're just like you can't kind of fight your way out of it and stuff but i'm not sure about him like i don't think he killed you um but i don't think he helped you heal either i think he kept you down so that he could control things and manage things and that you would look to him like he had the answers to everything and you trusted that and you just let him take over because it was easier for you to do that than it was to try to fight again because you were really it feels like when you're younger you're a fighter like you had a fight mentality like you're scrappy and you could you know passionate you could take care of yourself because that's what you had to do and you knew how to do that but then when you met this guy it was like like puppy love kind of oh perfect he can take care of everything and then I can have you know everything I want nice car pretty little house family and career and be happy and that's all I want is just be happy and it feels like all you want is to have a family like kids and a, a husband and grandparents for the kids and all that kind of stuff that's what it feels like to me that feels like a dream mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm connecting with her through the heart chakra, but I'm not feeling intensely her energy. When I first connected with her, she looks like about an eight-year-old girl and needing healing. And then as our conversation has progressed, then she moves into her more adult mode and she's kind of back like a guide for herself. So I see her as a little girl and then I see her higher self being a guide for herself. And I feel like she's very much on a healing journey. She definitely has, there's disruption in the field. I don't want you guys to think that there's something like wrong with her or she's stuck or anything like that. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm telling you, as I've connected with other spirits as well, she feels different. She's got a different vibe. And I feel like she looks up to people like Marilyn Monroe and Marlena Dietrich and Greta Garbo and these beautiful old Hollywood stars. And she just thinks, wow, you're gorgeous. And I just oh wow you know like kind of starstruck by them and so when I'm connecting with her I'm connecting with a higher version of herself that almost feels like the actress like she's acting for me is what it feels like like she's being a reporter and talking to me or being in an interview with me and so she's bringing her higher self forward to do that but she feels very young so what that means, you guys, this is a great opportunity for some education here at Above Life Channel as I'm talking to Brittany Murphy in the afterlife. What that simply means is there is opportunity for healing for anybody, anybody in the afterlife. When you leave the human body and maybe you have some baggage, maybe you've had trauma, maybe you've experienced incredible pain or tragedy in your life. Or maybe you just didn't feel fulfilled or you felt kept down by other people or relationships or whatever it might be. What, it doesn't matter what it is. There's a huge range of intensity that this could be encompassing. It doesn't have to be major severe things. It could be anything. And in the afterlife, there's opportunity for healing. There is. And so this is why she looks like a little girl because she wants to be loved and held as a child, a divine child with opportunity, future love. She wants to be loved. She wants to be loved. And that is exactly what's happening. And so her healing process, although she's, she's been gone for a while i'm sure it looks like in the 2000s somethings she's been gone for quite a while she still still has chosen to be in a vibration of healing a state of healing where she's receiving what it is that she needed most in this lifetime 
So no, Brittany Murphy is not incarnated. She's not reincarnated again. And no, she's not in horrible pain, okay? She's not suffering. There's not suffering like that. But I do feel the disruption in the field, which means there's some resistance and there's buffers. So that's why when I brought in Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael, which is what I do to help th keep things clear for me personally, I can also tell you that there's an extra energy and that is her husband and he's here and I can feel him. And so that's why I brought Michael and Raphael in too to kind of separate these two spirits. And this little girl spirit of Brittany Murphy is not being tormented or tortured or anywhere near the husband. And I want to say his name is Larry, but I don't know for sure. It's an L-A-R, L-A-R, so I don't know his last name could be Larson, L-A-R something, okay? Um, he, it's not messing with her, he's not hurting her, but he's got some stuff going on and I do not, I'm gonna have to actually move you guys because it's getting pretty rainy right here. I do not want to channel him and we are not gonna talk to him. So do not request that in the comments. Well, you can do whatever you want in the comments, but I'm not gonna respond to that. So I just wanna be really clear. So when I say people feel different or weird or there's a lot of psychic energy around people and the spirits kind of seem not at rest, you know, because we say rest in peace, rest in peace. I hope you find peace. She is in healing. She's in a process of healing. She's encompassed and folded with beautiful light of healing energy vibration. Her higher self, which is her beautiful godlike self, is taking care of her, protecting her. And she is showing to me as a young spirit, as an eight-year-old girl who is receiving love, divine child love. She is fully in the afterlife. She is fully in spirit form, okay? And she's not being controlled by anybody else. No other spirits are controlling her or anything like that. And she is not a ghost. Although I can tell as a child, an eight-year-old child, she's very curious and mischievous and it does look like I have never shared this kind of stuff before at Above Life Channel. This is a very interesting channel. I hope you guys like this one. I hope you appreciate this one. It's kind of long though. Sorry about that. She does haunt or sneak back into the human realm and play around, mess around in that house that it looks like a townhouse. It's like a two level something, either that or it's a condo on the second level or something. She messes around there. And I think that there's probably, if we Google this, or look it up online, which we can do after. I didn't do that before, but we could do that after this. I bet there's evidence of it. I bet that somebody's done a video about it or talked about it. I bet it's kind of knowledge. People know that she hangs out, hangs out and is around, but it doesn't mean she's stuck. It doesn't mean she's a ghost. Brittany Murphy is not stuck and she's not a ghost, but her childlike energy does come back and does playful things. And it could creep you out a little bit. Could be a little scary if you were living in that place. I would not be living in that place. So, all right. So beautiful love and peaceful energy around you. And I wish you nothing but love. So I'm going to surround you in a beautiful energy of pink, pink energy, which is heart chakra connecting into the beautiful love and light and all of the healing power that you desire. Unconditional love, unconditional love in the afterlife, Brittany. That's what I, I wish for you. And now all of a sudden I just saw her grow up and she looks like uh, she's in her mid twenties and she's smiling and has beautiful red lips and gorgeous, gorgeous blonde hair. And yeah, I see you. I see you as you want me to see you. I am gonna mention as well, I feel like there were also struggles with her weight and with her looks. I'm just gonna acknowledge that Brittany because I think it's important for people watching to know that that's how you felt that you struggled with your weight that you struggled with the way you looked and that you really had a lot of self-doubt about that as well because i think that other people to know that um might be able to help them in their own life too to be more accepting and loving of ourselves is really important and perhaps we can talk again in the future and and check in with you on your path to see where you're at in the healing process or journey and maybe connect with you at a different state of reflection about your human life so we could inspire other young actresses and other people who are are looking at your life and kind of sad about how it all unfolded maybe could get some inspiration from you based upon reflections of some experiences that you've had some of the good stuff that you experienced and maybe some things that you learned as well all right, this is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching this long video. Wow, this was a, there's a lot of new things here that I haven't shared before, which is kind of interesting. I usually stay away from the drama, but sometimes it comes right at you, I guess, and we have to be willing to show up and be real with what is real. 
So this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've inspired your curious spirit and given you some hope about just connection in general and a little bit more understanding about that afterlife stuff, about what a ghost is, what what it means to re, you know, be uh, whether you're reincarnated or not, or what it means to be a ghost and what it means to be in a healing state in the afterlife. I think I think that that's helped. I hope that that's given you some hope about afterlife and understanding that a little more. So it's not so creepy. It doesn't have to be creepy like in the movies, you guys. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. Uh, remember, this is your life. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what your thoughts say about you, your limits, and all that stuff. Just remember that this is your life. This is your life. And you are a gift. You are. So live it. Just live. Live your best life now. Don't wait. Thanks for watching.